a coalition of different churches of different denominations. They decided to establish an organization at the time called Peace Committee, which was aimed to listen to the victims of uh, human rights abuses immediately after the military dictatorship in Chile, led by General Pinochet. And this Peace Committee needed social workers to be able to listen to write reports and to advise people how to go alongside a legal department. I was privileged in being given the position to work there as a social worker, to be able to listen firsthand the reports from mothers, wives, sisters, grandmothers, grandfathers, who were coming at the time to report the disappearance of their loved ones. And during three years I was working from 8 o'clock until approximately 5 o'clock, listening to different accounts of human rights violations. And I'm going to illustrate this with just three or four cases. The first one that still I cannot, rem I cannot believe, I cannot somehow absorb, was the day when a man in his 70, 75 years of age, come to me and says, last night she was taken away and now she disappeared for the last 10 days. So I was writing another report of human rights violations after hundreds I have written before. As, and the sequence was very similar. Secret police with cars, without number plates, would blindfold people, would just destroy the properties take them away and disappear, and no one would know anything at all. So when this man said she was taken away and it disappeared for 10 days, I said, and how old was she? And I thought that he says, 22. So I said, 22. No, 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 he said. I said, excuse me, you said two? Because obviously I couldn't believe my ears. I said, yes. I still couldn't believe. You said, Two years of age, yes, I almost felt, and this is not possible. Sadly, it was real. The person who had been taken away was two years of age, and her name is Macarena Aguiló. Why was this little girl taken away and disappeared for 10 days? Because the secret police couldn't actually detain her father, who was a active, well-known leader trying to actually fight the military regime. So they couldn't find him, so as a way to make him to surrender, they took his daughter and made her disappear for 10 days. And here the grandfather had come to report that. The first case that I just still cannot believe it. Second case which Sadly, I still remember for the wrong reasons. This was a colleague of mine in the Peace Committee who was a dentist, uh, whose son has been taken into prison because he was an engineer working for the government in the north of Chile. And he was a very conscientious person. But because of his commitment, he was taken away. His wife, who was a solicitor, at the time, was told, don't worry, he hasn't done nothing wrong, so probably he's going to be released in the next two days. She, as a solicitor, believed the military policeman who gave that information. Sadly, that was not the case. Two weeks later, they contacted the wife to say, come and get the body, because he's dead. And he was killed in the most brutal way, without any process of inquiry or any judge. Second case, this mom, like every mom, was so distraught to the extreme. Although she has the means to travel, to pay solicitors, to go to people of some status to protect her, couldn't get nowhere. There was no solicitor during that time who could actually dare to take a case of this nature because that would be serious trouble for them. But this mother 
after a long time in searching for her son and trying to get justice, got so low that she ended up by committing suicide and she jumped out of the 10th floor in a big building in the city of Santiago in Chile. Doc and this is Doctora uh, Aguiló. Sadly, one of those cases is still in my memory. The third case is Sebastián Acevedo, an ordinary peasant who was so proud of his two children because they were now university students and that was the first time that ordinary poor students could go to university without having to pay. So rightly so, this person was very proud of them. However, these two young people were very conscientious and they wanted to also defy this military regime because of its cruelties. However, they were detained and they were disappeared. Sebastián Acevedo spent days looking for them, asking the authorities, went everywhere, no answer, but he knew because the whole country knew when somebody was detained during that context, probably that person had been killed or had been disappeared. He was so, so frightened and so uh, hopeless in not knowing what to do because there was no authority who was ready to listen about these atrocities. So he ended up setting himself alight in the public square and he died out of his bones. So that was the tragedy of a very ordinary, humble person who has lost the most precious yeah, yeah. thing in his life, his two children. I could mention also cases of people who have lost their life in a totally unnecessary way. One close friend of mine, who was also living in a shanty town, he was brutally killed because of his belief, similar to our hero in terms of his musical support to the poor people, Victor Jara, who was shot 44 times and who has just been left in an abandoned plot to be found by his wife and then his wife have to leave the country with her two young daughters in the most distressing, appalling, sad circumstances, knowing that no authority in the country of Chile at the time would really even acknowledge that crime.